Hey guys, in this quick video, I'm going to show you the most incredible weapons in Lightroom, how to go from this to this using local adjustment tools to guide the eyes of the viewer inside of your photo. This is a game changer on how you can retouch your photos. Also stay until the end and I'll show you how you can come with me to Iceland in September to take amazing photos. All right, so let me show you how you can really guide the eyes of the viewer while you know, retouching your photo. What I'm about to show you is probably the best weapon Lightroom has. So be focused. All right, so here we are. This is a photo I shot in Iceland. And again, I'm gonna talk about my new Iceland workshop coming up in September. I'm so excited, I only have three spots left. So stay till the end if you wanna come with me. This is probably the best place where you can get photos per square meter. So this is Diamond Beach. Diamond Beach is an amazing beach where you get like three, four hours of sunrise and uh, you have all these like small icebergs on the beach. And so what I did is I, I went on a tripod and I was at 7.1 ISO 100 because I wanted to clean this photo. And I was at 2.5 seconds because 2.5 seconds, you get these sort of leading lines like this, which I really like. So the first thing I'm gonna do on this one is I'm just gonna open up the shadows and bring on the highlights. Uh, and then I'm gonna hold on the Alt key on my keyboard and uh, that way I can set a black point. So check this out. If you hold on the Alt key or the Option key on a Mac and you go left with a black uh, slider, you can have about like 1% or 2% of pure black, which is what you want. And then you can do the same thing with the white key. You see right away as soon as I go there, so the black key is basically, what you see in blue is dots which are 100 pixel, which are 100% black. There is no more information. I like to have a little bit of this on this photo, maybe that much, okay? But when it comes for the white, I don't want any, so I'm gonna back it down. Okay, good. Now the white balance is really weird on this one because you know, the it's all blue and it was a lot warmer from what I remember. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna check out daylight, too blue. I'm gonna go to cloudy maybe, still too blue. And I'm gonna go to shade. Yeah, shade I think is gonna be good. I'm just gonna add a little bit of magenta cause I'm a magenta addict and I think it really helps this photo. Okay, uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is just add some contrast and I already like the photo a lot better. But this is nothing, guys, compared to what you're about to witness. You're about to witness the best weapon in Lightroom. Why Lightroom, I think, is the best software out there to retouch photos. And that's really my opinion. So I'm going to take here the crop tool. And I'm going to go 16 by 9 because I want to make this photo like a, you know, more like a movie-like panorama kind of thing. So I'm going to use the angle tool here to click and drag to make sure that my photo is super straight. And then I really want to put the um, all the attention more I think, you know, when you do a cropping and when you compose something, you have to ask yourself, what is nicer, the sky or the floor, the, the ground? I think the ground is more interesting. So what I'm doing here on the rule of third is I'm putting two third of ground and one third of sky. I like that. Awesome, just to see the before and after, I'm gonna create a virtual copy and then I'm gonna reset it so you can see where we, so that was the before and that's the after. But now what I wanna show you is how to use the local adjustment tool to guide the viewer inside of your photo. Okay, so what is the story of this photo? It's really this iceberg, you know. I want the, the viewer to go and watch this iceberg. I want everything in this photo to lead to that. So how can we achieve that? Using Dodge and Burn, which has been used by masters since about a hundred years. Well, the masters of photography, black and white, Ansel Adams, uh, you know, and Henri Cartier-Bresson, they would have loved these tools. So you click here and you go to a linear gradient and you click and drag and that's gonna make your gradient, what you see in red is where the gradient is gonna affect your photo. Then what you can do is just lower the exposure and then you can move around. So bigger your gradient, more it's gonna be subtle. So I want to just close a little bit the photo like that. Just make the whole sky a little dark. And sometimes what I do, and don't tell anyone about this, I add another gradient for the very top because Clyde Butcher and Sol Adams, they do that a lot where they close the very top of their photo just a tad so you've got two gradients on top i'm not going to do it at the bottom overall but i'm going to close the corner even more so what i'm going to do because again i want the viewer to come inside so i'm going to go here take a linear gradient and drag and drop just on the side here because it's already pretty dark here and i want to close this photo here on the side a little bit yeah again for thing the viewer to come inside i'm going to do it one more time on the on uh, on the right side 
I'm going to click and drag. You see in red, that's what we're doing. And we're just lowering a bit the exposure. So now my eyes is really going inside. But this is nothing. We can do a lot better. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dodge and burn the star of, of the show, which is this iceberg. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to take a brush. And first, we're going to dodge the light. Dodging means making it brighter. So what I do is I put flow and density in the 70, 73, something like this. And then I just add a bit of exposure. Voila. I'm going to zoom in, let's say, uh, not 300%. Now let's zoom in 100%. So we're really onto the iceberg. And I, what I'm looking for in the iceberg is things which are a little bit brighter. And I'm just going to make them a little bit brighter. So one good rule of thumb is I start usually at 1. OK, here, see, 0.95 or 1. That's not an exact math. And then, and then I usually back it down. To about um, to about 0.5. If because if you do one even with flow and density in the point, it's going to be too much visible. And what I'm going to do, what I'm doing is I'm just adding a bit of light on some of the lighter spot already of the of the ice cube. Okay, all right. And uh, check this out. If you want to see, it. so you see it's it's too visible. I mean, I can see there's something going on. So what I do is I just back it down to about 0.50. Or under 0 0.50. 0 0.50 is going to be subtle. Check this out. All right. Before, after. You see how it just lights up a little bit? But that's not all. And I really advise you to do brush over brush over brush, not to do all with that with one brush. Is I'm going to add another brush, brush, but this time I'm going to go the other way. So flow and density is still in 70. I'm going to lower the exposure. And especially this one here, I, I just want to darken it a little bit. Make it a bit more dark. Maybe darken this part that's already dark. Darken this part that's already dark. Darken this part. And so we just give, we model this a lot more. And same thing here. I start at 0.95 and I end up under 0.5. I find that 0.5 is a good sweet point. Like there's a great test you can do when you do dodge and burning is that if you look at this photo tomorrow and you ask yourself whether you dodged and burned this photo, did you actually make it brighter or darker? Then you know you've not gone too far. If you can see it right away, then you've gone too far. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take care of the leading arm. So I'm going to take a brush and I'm just going to add a bit of exposure. And I'm going to brush this here. To, and I'm going to add a, you know some light to guide the eyes of the viewer inside of the photo. And I don't do it everywhere. I just do it on some of the lines, the one that I find that are the most nice. And maybe on this one, I'm going to go crazy at 0.64 because it's not so much visible. OK. And um, but then I really want to focus the eyes of the viewer inside of the photo. So what I do is I, I'm going to add right now a uh, radial gradient uh, in the middle. And this one is just with a bit of light, just maybe again under 0.5, just to make the middle of the photo a bit darker, a bit brighter, sorry, to just get the eyes to view inside, inside. Okay, great. And now I'm going to go again, and I'm going to go um, to a brush, and I'm going to make some of this darker so that the brighter comes out even more. So I'm going to lower the exposure, I'm going to make it bigger, and I'm just going to darken here, darken there, and that's going to end darker here. And it's going to put even more, and maybe darken here also, even more attention on the leading lines. Okay, making sure that I stay around 0.50, I think it's good. Okay, last but not least, I want to add more color to this photo. So I want to add more of the sunset. Again, the local adjustment tool is the best for that. I'm going to take a, take a radial gradient. I'm going to make a radial gradient really big. And then I'm going to add some magenta and some yellow and some saturation for the all of that here, just so that it's much brighter. Check it out before, after. It's brighter. It's more colorful. It gets you even more inside of the photo. And just to show you the before and after, so I'm going to right click. I'm going to create a virtual copy. And then I'm going to go here. And I'm going to delete all mask, OK? So that there's no adjustment. There's just a global adjustment. So check it out. This is where we started from. This is the raw file on retouch. This is just using global adjustment, which is already cool. I love it. 
But now this is using all the local adjustment to guide the eyes inside of that beautiful iceberg. So if you click on this video, you will see that I have a, quite some workshop. They're all sold out except a new one that I just announced, which is the Iceland Photography Workshop, September 1 to 9. Now this is a really incredible workshop. I've been wanting to do this for years and it's my first workshop in Iceland. I only have three seats left. It's the longest workshop I ever did. It's nine days and check out some of this photo. We, sh we go to uh, Reykjavik on day one and we have uh, Thor, which is one of the best guide in Iceland. It's going to take us through some of the most iconic parts of the highlands uh, in and look at some of the photos that uh, students have been getting that I've been getting in Iceland. It's just unbelievable. Uh, you can get all the details about this workshop. The workshops cost eight thousand uh, dollars for nine days. Uh, it includes uh, two guides, myself as your teacher. I'm going to be with you be behind you, retouching the photos, all the um, all the transportation is a lot. We have a special bus four by four, and uh, it's just going to be an incredible experience. You can get a 900 discount if you're okay to share a room with somebody else. It is going to be one of the most extraordinary experience you will ever do. If you can afford it, we only have three seats left. I'd love to see you and work with you in Iceland. The link is under the video. Uh, it's unbelievable.